Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you blessed, church? Amen. Remind us all what is supposed to be, what we are we supposed to be observing or celebrating today? Pentecost. Pentecost. Hallelujah. Amen, church? Amen. And uh, what is Pentecost again? Remind us what is Pentecost again? What is the Pentecost again, my dear brothers and sisters? The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And just think about it. If you pour out a water of bottle in here, it will go to the floor. What will happen to that water? It will go to waste. Isn't it? In order for that water not to go to waste, you have a glass. You need to have a glass to pour the water into. Or it needs to have us, a vessel. We are called a vessel. So when we drink, if we pour the water in our mouth, it will not go to waste. Amen, church? So I believe that the Holy Spirit is, I mean, Pentecost is twofold. First is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But second as well, which is equally important, is the receiving of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church? Because what is the point of the Holy Spirit being poured? If it's not going to be received. Amen? Amen? Because, you know, the passage that we have said, that's what Jesus Christ said, that when the Holy Spirit will come, it will fill us. So, when the Holy Spirit came in that Pentecost, the life of those believers gathered were needed as well to be filled. Amen, church? Amen? Amen? Are we filled? Are we filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen? I don't believe it. You call that the amen, the response of uh, people of God, of believers, of Christian, who is filled with the Holy Spirit? Is that the, the, I mean, tell me, is that the expected response when we claim to have been filled, when we claim to have been receiving the Holy Spirit, Amen. Come on, church. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you filled? Yeah. I'm still not convinced. I don't know if the Lord is convinced. But the good thing is the Lord can see our hearts. Yes. Amen. The Lord can see our hearts. Hallelujah. Let us please stand up and let us uh, desire for the Holy Spirit once again. Sige, my dear brothers and sisters, we all knew the story of Pentecost. And like what you have said earlier, we all knew what happened to Pentecost. And we ended last week with our message, introduction to the Pentecost, where the believers were waiting uh, that our opening song, waiting, waiting, waiting. And you know, my dear brothers and sisters, the Lord is omnipresent. Amen. 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 The Lord is omnipresent. The Lord is here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And when we say that the Lord is here, the Holy Spirit of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. So, really, in theory, when we say we are waiting, we are waiting, it's probably the other way around that the Holy Spirit is actually waiting for us to open up. The Holy Spirit does not need to come from elsewhere. The Holy Spirit does not need to come down the hill because they have a service there that end right now. So the Holy Spirit will become rushing up the hill to come here. No, the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. 
The Holy Spirit present is here. Amen. And the only reason that we are not feeling, experiencing, the only reason that He's not manifesting in us is because of some blockages in us. So depending on the Holy Spirit manifestation in your life this afternoon, the Holy Spirit manifestation in our gathering in this church this afternoon is dependent on us, is proportionate in us. Sa atin po nakasalalay, it is in us. When Jesus Christ left, as we are going to read, the believers did not just possibly wait for the Holy Spirit. They were desiring for it. They were praying for it. They were pursuing for it, my dear brothers and sisters. We are naive if we think that we sit here and wait in timidity for the Holy Spirit to come. No. Before the Holy Spirit can lead us, we need to have the desire to be led. We need the heart to desire to experience in encounter. We need the heart to desire to receive. The word of the Lord in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 to 8. It says in there, On one occasion, while Jesus was eating with them, He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my Father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they meet together, they ask him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times, or dates the Father has set by His own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Amen. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that was last time's promise. And if we jump on today in Acts chapter 2 verses 1 to 4, when the day of the Pentecost came, they were all together in one place and suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Let us pray. Our Lord Holy Spirit, the ball is in your court now. Come and manifest your presence in our midst. Prepare each and every heart. Prepare each and every mind. Prepare each and every soul. Prepare each and every being. Prepare my dear brothers and sisters. As well as the people joining us online. That may we receive the portion that you have prepared for us this afternoon. If it is not too much to us, Lord, may we have the same portion that our patriarch of faith have experienced on that day of outpouring through Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us sit down. Thank you very much. And before we start, as we know, Pentecost is the culmination of a 10-day long Thy Kingdom Come week. And uh, we have been praying online. 
uh, the last 10 days uh, with the joint um, uh, prayer focus relevant to our town, relevant to our churches. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank you all. To thank those brothers and sisters who may not have completed the 10 days, but they were there praying with us. Thank you very much for the life of each and every one. And with this, I want to, in behalf of the body of churches here in Aldershot, the Aldershot churches together, in behalf of them, I just want to invite each and every one. There is a culmination service of worship and prayer at the St. Andrew's Church this evening at 7 o'clock. Amen. Amen. And I pray that we will all desire to go there. I pray that if we have brothers and sisters who are not able to come here this afternoon, invite them to meet us there. Amen? But if I can just may request, if we are intending to go there, if we are desiring to go there, let us please observe custom and courtesy. Let us be there before it starts at 7 o'clock so as not to disrupt whatever the program that they have. Amen. It's a new place. I haven't been there. I don't know how the parking is like in there. I know it's probably a big building. They say that they were able to clear out at least 426 uh, spaces, chairs for people. So there's probably, I don't know, if all the ch the Christians in Aldershot will go, There's it's probably not enough space. So let's go early. Let's find parking. Let's find uh, a spot, a slot that uh, con comfortable, convenient with us. If you want us to sit as a church, uh, there's probably a positive in it. But if you want to go and join other churches, there's probably a greater positive on it as well. So, my dear brothers and sisters, let us desire. Amen, Amen church. So, let us go to our message this afternoon. So, like I've said, last week we ended our message with a period of waiting for the disciples period of the promise of the Holy Spirit. And this Sunday is the fulfillment of that promise. This Sunday is the culmination of that waiting. It's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It's the Pentecost, if you like. Amen, church. And during the time of Pentecost, as you have heard us preach in previous Pentecost as well, the usual theme about Pentecost are the Holy Spirit. It's about faith. It's about hope. It's about love. It's about unity. It's about waiting. It's about praying. It's about obedience. It's about gift of tongues. It's about boldness. It's about having courage. And many others. And I believe that each and every one of those team are in their own right. Are a met, are a meat. Carne. Isn't it? In the Bible there is that milk and meat preaching. And I believe that each and every one of those team can be a meat in season. Amen, church? But as I was praying to the Lord, that Lord, it's the Pentecost. What message do you want us to partake 
You know, recently, I've been crying more and more often to the Lord. And one early hours in the morning, as I was praying and crying to the Holy Spirit, coming again to God for a lament, asking for a message, and I was led to this message this afternoon. And although I believe that this is probably a personal message of the Lord for me, I think it's, I, I think I believe that this is probably a personal message of the Lord for me. But I just want to share it with you. With a prayer that you can relate as I was able to relate. Or, I mean, the disciples during that time were able to relate, my dear brothers and sisters. And I just want to share it with us all this afternoon. And I pray that the Lord will open the spirit of understanding sa ating lahat and all of us that we may receive our own tailored personal message from the Lord. Amen? Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, you know when Jesus said, what did Jesus said? Do not leave Jerusalem. Because the tendency is, we saw those two people, upon the hearing of the, the death of Jesus Christ, they were going to Emmaus. And we know, that that usually is the case. Amen? And when Jesus said that do not leave Jerusalem, and he knows that there is that intention, that's why he said, no, do not leave, leave, wait. Wait. Wait first for the promise. Amen, church? The waiting disciples they are not sure. They cannot make a decision without the guidance of Jesus. And as a believer, as a Christian, it's ought to be. It's ought to be. Amen? The disciples, they do not know what to do. All they have is the parting instruction of Jesus Christ, which is as we read in verse 4. It says in there, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the promise, the gift, Holy Spirit. Yun lamang po yung kanilang pinanghahawakan. That's the only thing that they are holding on to. The Lord Jesus did not say how long. The Lord Jesus did not say, they did not, the Lord Jesus did not comfort them and say, it's just in a matter of days, just in a matter of weeks, months or years. And on that tenth day of being gathered together in Jerusalem, on that tenth day of waiting, what happened? The fulfillment of the promise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Pentecost is here. Amen, church. Amen. Although we rejoice during the time of Easter, the resurrection of our Lord, but we count of seven full weeks and another reason to rejoice because the Holy Spirit was poured. Amen, church. So on the tenth day, after giving the instruction, the Holy Spirit came. Amen. Pentecost came. And like what I have said, what did Pentecost brought? You answered me earlier. What happened to Pentecost? You answered me earlier. Or you gave the answer earlier. The Holy Spirit was poured Upon the people. Was it in a silent way? Was it in a secretive way? No. 
That's why I was asking you earlier. And you say, you are filled. And I ask, Amen. And you say, Amen. The Holy Spirit did not come in a secretive way. The Holy Spirit did not come in a secret. The Holy Spirit came in an observable way. Amen, church. So what happened during the time of Pentecost? The Holy Spirit was poured. It says violent wind, strong wind. Amen, church. Tongues of fire. Very observable way. Very obvious way. Amen, church. What happened on that Pentecost as well? Each disciples received the gift to speak different languages as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Again, remind me what was Acts 1 8 says when the Holy Spirit comes, you will receive the power to witness for Him. So, all these people who received that gift, there were many other people on the people in Jerusalem during that time. And each and every one was empowered to preach the word of the Lord according to the tongues that the Holy Spirit enabled them. Amen, church? Amen. It's not only Peter, no. nor the rest of the ten disciples. Everyone. Not only this man. Every one of us. It is our mandate to preach. If you can preach that in Ilocano, Tagalog, Bisaya, so be it. The Lord will give the supplication. Amen, church. So many of our brothers and sisters, I have been asking, I have been wanting for them to come and share as well. But sometimes they are hindered because of the lack of English. Let the Lord, the Lord of supplication will do the rest. Amen, church. Come and stand in front and shout hallelujah. And people will understand in their own language according to the conviction that the Holy Spirit will give them. Because at the end of the day, it's not about us. Amen, church. So you can see that in Acts chapter 4, verse 13, where all the believers received the Holy Spirit, were enabled to speak in tongues. You can see that people even said, oh, what's happening? Are they drunk? What is happening to these people? Are they drunk? It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. So Apostle Peter had to explain to them, Amen, church? The, Holy, the Pentecost, what did the Pentecost accomplish as well? The Pentecost accomplished the fulfillment of an old prophecy made by Prophet Joel in Joel chapter 2. Amen? And Peter preached about this. But it says in there, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision. And your old men will dream dreams. That is a fulfillment of the prophecy made through prophet Joel, chapter 2. From verse 38, if you like. What else did Pentecost accomplish, my dear brothers and sisters? Not only, again, a recap, not only that the Holy Spirit was poured out, not only that the believer received the gift according to enablement of the Holy Spirit, not only that the uh, old age prophecy was fulfilled, what happened as well? The believers were truly empowered. Peter, in one day as he preached, are you ready for this? 3,000 people got converted. And that is all because of the Holy Spirit. Amen, church. 
3,000 people in a single day got baptized because of the Holy Spirit. You can find that in verse 37 to 41. What else that the Pentecost have came to accomplish? Imagine all of a sudden one day 3,000 people are saved. So what will it bring to the church, to the body of Christ? It says in there in verse 42 to four, uh, 47, their numbers grow daily. Amen. Their numbers grow daily. Amen, church. Amen. The numbers grow daily. They did not only the num did not only the numbers grow daily, my dear brothers and sisters. Why did the numbers grow daily? Because they prioritized the work of the Lord. They prioritized the work of the Lord. The commission fulfilled. Amen, church. What was the commission of the Lord? What was the commission that the Lord given to the disciples before he left? The commission of the Lord is, you will be my witness in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, in all the ends of the earth. Amen. Commission fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen, church. Amen. But let us not forget, the commission comes in at least, I don't know, twofolds or threefold if you like. I just want to say twofolds. The first fold is, you will be my witness in Jerusalem. And the second fold is, you will be my witness in Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the earth. That was always the commission. Amen, church? Therefore, we can agree that the first fold of commission in Jerusalem was fulfilled. Amen, church? Because of Pentecost, because of the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, they said, you will receive power to witness in Jerusalem. Amen, church? But there is yet Judea and Samaria and all the ends of the earth to preach the gospel to. Amen, church? Are we, are we in the same place so far? Amen. Amen. And before we continue, I just want to give you a testimony. Okay? I just want to give you a testimony. And please, don't misconstrue it. Please don't misunderstand it. Please don't receive it with animosity. Otherwise, I wouldn't have shared. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. Please, I understand that I mean well. And be reassured that I'm not trying to point a fingers. Please understand that I'm not trying to blame others. I'm not trying to upset people. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. When me and my wife, Mary Ann, started a small fellowship back in Borden together with few brethren in Borden. This is in October of 2012. We start in a scratch. We started with nothing. Only equipped with the one single motive, and that is in fulfillment of the calling of the Lord, in fulfillment of the commission of the Lord. 
Some of you in here were with us there in Borden when we were started, when we were starting. Until it became a church. And in 2016, you disrupted our quiet life. You disrupted our quiet life. Oh, brethren, we met brethren from Aldershot in 2016. And in 2017, we became a Christ is our rock church. Fellowship. Christ is our rock church. Ministries. International, my dear brothers and sisters. In the last seven years, we became family. We're family, isn't it? Isn't that right? We're family, amen? See your family? In the last seven years, we became family. And for the glory of God, few, other, few others were added over the years that brought us where we are now, the privilege to spend time with our uh, wonderful fellows in here that was uh, recently allowed the Lord to come and uh, enjoy the worship with us. And in the sad note, there are other people as well who left. That's not a secret. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. In the last seven years, we became family. In the last seven years, we became our Jerusalem. Amen, church? Amen. The last seven years, we became our Jerusalem. The first fold of our commission fulfilled. Praise God! Amen! Ibalik natin sa Panginoon ang kapurihan. Let's return to the Lord the praises and glory and honor. Hallelujah! Amen, church? But that did not came without a challenge. That did not came without a struggle. My wife knows that the last seven years I cried in silence. The last seven years I struggled in silence. The last seven years, I suffered tremendously in silence. You were there. It was not a secret when my health and well-being was uh, affected. Late 2019, I was diagnosed with hypertension. Not only that the health and well-being suffered. The family suffered as well. The family is affected as well. I have been called in many occasions a false teacher and a false prophet if the preaching, the teaching does not sit well in our understanding. I have been called to preach a false gospel in many occasions when the preaching and teaching does not sit in our own understanding. My purpose and my motive has been raised many times if decision that does not sit in us is being made the courtesy, the respect, the pastoral honor is not there at times depending on what do we feel. And yes, the last seven years, I believe I have been murdered. That's the word of the Lord, isn't it? That if you think something a murder is not only murder, it could also be a murder in the heart. Amen, church. That's according to the word of God. 
You probably, I mean, as our elders and fellows here, they know, they say that that's part of serving. Amen. As many servants will say, I mean, we have two elders in here, uh, Patricia and David, with many years in your service, you probably will say, come on, pastor. That's part of serving the Lord. That's part of being a servant. Amen, church. That's part of being a servant. That is a package. Before you entered into that, before you were married in Christ, you would have expected that to happen. And I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree with all those. I agree that that's part of being, that's part of servanthood. Yeah, we were preaching in here a few weeks ago that I'm in Christ, our Savior and Master, the first fruit have suffered. So who are we to think? Who am I to think that I will experience otherwise? It comes as a part of ministry. And I praise God. I glorify the name of God in spite of the deep trauma, in spite of the deep pain, in spite of the deep suffering. Believe me, my dear brothers and sisters, like I've said, the fact that I'm still standing here today, If there are other motive, if there are other purpose and reason, I wouldn't be standing here today. The only reason that I am here to fit in this pulpit today is because of my love to you. You probably wouldn't agree with me. But if the Lord can reveal the content of my heart, your name will be there. And I release forgiveness. I release love. I release blessing. I release the pastoral covering to all of you. Even to those people who are not here. But I thank God most of all. I praise God most of all because I now understand Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I now understand. When I was coming to the Lord and say that, Lord, in my lament, Father, what do you want me to share? You know what the Lord message to me was? We enumerated what did Pentecost brought. We enumerated what was the outcome of Pentecost? In my wildest dream, in my wildest thoughts, I wouldn't have think about this. But you know what? What did Pentecost brought, my dear brothers and sisters? What else did Pentecost brought? You know what else is the outcome of Pentecost? Anyone? Persecution. I agree. Brother Ramon said death. Stephen was the first believer to be persecuted and martyred because of his faith in the Lord. Paul, who was himself a persecutor, became persecuted when he put his faith in Christ. Amen. Amen. The believers remained in Jerusalem. The believers remained in their families. The believers remained in their comfort zones, fulfilling the first fold of the commission, witnessing in Jerusalem. 
witnessing in their community, witnessing in their family. But don't forget, there is yet the second fold of the commission to go out of Jerusalem, to go to Samaria, and to go to the ends of the earth. Are you wondering, my dear brothers and sisters, how could this commission be fulfilled? How could this commission be fulfilled? To go out of their Jerusalem, to go out of their families, to go out of their comfort zone, to go to Judea and Samaria, to go to the ends of the earth. Something would have happened. And what is that? Persecution. Persecution, my dear brothers and sisters, gave way for this. You know, if the believers were not persecuted in Jerusalem, they wouldn't have been running away. If the believers were not persecuted in Jerusalem, they wouldn't have escaped away. They wouldn't have moved out of Jerusalem. The gospel wouldn't have been preached to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And hallelujah, I thank God because of persecution. I understand now. Naiintindihan ko na ngayon. And sana maintindihan din natin. I understand and I pray that maintindihan din natin that the Holy Spirit did not only empower the believers on the time of Pentecost and they witnessed in their Jerusalem, their families, their loved ones, their communities, but the same Holy Spirit uses persecution as a catalyst for them to move out of Jerusalem, for them to move out of their families, for them to move out of their communities, to go to the Samaria and to the ends of the earth as well. The Lord said, the calling is not about Jerusalem. It's about the word of God. It's about the word of God. And my dear brothers and sisters, I pray that the Holy Spirit will give Rema unto us. The Holy Spirit will complete and fulfill His message personally tailored and unique upon the life of each and every one. It is my prayer that the Holy Spirit will complete the message in you and through you. I praise God and I glorify the name of the Lord on this journey that they have put me through Whatever ups and downs, whatever lows, I wouldn't change a thing. Even my deepest pain and lowest moment, I wouldn't change it. Because without them, I don't think that I will actually clearly see the message of the Lord is. Let's stand up, church, and let's bring back the music team. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for Pentecost. Praise the Lord for the gift, Holy Spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us return the ball to the court of the Lord and allow Him 
to pour out His presence. That the Holy Spirit in our heart, the Holy Spirit in our mind, the Holy Spirit in our innermost being, that it will be manifested out. Let us wait for the Lord Church. Let us wait for the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. If you can, my dear brothers and sisters, just be with the Holy Spirit. If you can, just close your eyes. Just close your eyes and connect with the Holy Spirit. Block out senses and let the Holy Spirit manifest His presence to you in you and through you. Spirit, please be manifested in our midst this afternoon. Spirit. It's about the Holy Spirit. It's not about the pastor. It's not about each and every one of these servants standing in the front. It's not about the person next to you. It's not about this church. It's not about our problem. It's not about our victory. It's about the Holy Spirit. Church, 
days after today, many weeks after today, many months after today, or even many years after today. Don't you wanna come back on this day, on this Pentecost Sunday, and say that that Sunday was the life transforming Sunday on my life. My dear brothers and sisters, we are standing at the dawn of wonderful opportunity and privilege this afternoon. I pray for the desire to open your eyes. I pray for the desire to open your spiritual ears. I pray for the desire to open your heart, to open your spiritual senses for the Holy Spirit this afternoon. Let the Holy Spirit fill you up. Heaven cannot contain Him. The floodgates of heaven is open. And the Lord knows that you are empty. I am empty myself. And I could only rely to the infilling. Open up, my dear brothers and sisters. My dear brothers and sisters, when the Holy Spirit came, people did not withhold. People did not withhold. My dear brothers and sisters, we both call ourselves Christians. We both call ourselves believers. We both say we profess faith in the Lord. Is this not the very foundation of that profession? The only reason that the church was alive was because the Holy Spirit was poured out. And like what I have said earlier, where would the Holy Spirit go if not in us? Open up church. I pray the spirit of understanding and supplication I personally can say that Lord I understand now I understand now Lord that this Pentecost is the turning point in my life is the turning point of my decision is the turning point of my future is the turning point of my relationship with you is the turning point of my tomorrow that this Pentecost is a turning point of my walk with you is a turning point of my faith in you Lord, I don't want to live in the world anymore. Lord, I don't want to put my one foot in the world and one foot in you anymore. Lord, thank you. Thank you for using my circumstance. Thank you for using my situation thank you for using my beloved brother my beloved sister thank you for using my pastor thank you for using these leaders thank you for using other people my colleague my workmates thank you for using everyone even as for a catalyst of your persecution because I can see you now oh God I can see your purposes now, Lord.
brothers and sisters. We say we are seven years. This church is seven years. But I will not magpapasintabi ako. Please don't be upset if I tell you that our situation, our position, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we conduct coming to church, the way we conduct everything is the same as we do in back in year 2017. You know that, my dear brothers and sisters? The thing is, it was not tomorrow. It's seven years apart. It's seven years apart. Because you know why? Because it's not because the Lord is incapable. Because it's not because the Lord has no power. If there is a reason, it's our lack of faith. It's our lack of desire. It's our lack of hunger and thirst. It's our lack of longing. Up until today, again, allow me to say this with love. But up until today, we remain delusional. From the pastor to the leaders, to everyone. We thought that we can continue to walk with our one foot in the world and one foot in the so-called faith. We still think and believe that we can continue our old former way of life. and continue to walk as a church. My dear brothers and sisters, Holy Spirit was given in Pentecost. But I believe that what expedite the coming of the Holy Spirit was because of the hunger, the thirst, the cry, the desire, the commitment, the passion of each and every one. Can we sing that song, Come Holy Spirit? And let's sing it, A Changed Man. Let's sing it more than a song. Let's sing it with a deep desire in our heart. Let's sing it as we mean it. Haranain natin ang Panginoon. Let's sing it as a song of a lover to His.
Anyone wants to be prayed over? I would be glad. I will be blessed to pray with you.
Hallelujah. Church, let us not miss this chance. Let us not miss this chance. Let this time be the turning point in our lives. Let this time be when we put aside the indecision and stand for the truth. Let this time be when we decide for our future with the decision that counts. Your life is too precious. Your life is too precious. I wish I can tell you that don't worry, there are still days and weeks and months and years to come. But if indeed we still have days and weeks and months in years to come, may we spend that waiting for the Lord rather than be wanting. So my dear brothers and sisters, I thank the Lord for your life. I praise the Lord for your life. And from this man standing in the front, I have you in my mind and in my heart. Your name, your family, every one of you. And truly is a wonderful and great opportunity and privilege to worship and serve the Lord alongside you. May God bless you all. My dear brothers and sisters, you know the believers, when they received the Holy Spirit, they did not stop in there. It enables them to continue. It enables them to continue. So rise up, people of God, and continue the walk. Rise up, people of God, and continue the walk. Your walk to the Lord is not dependent on who is standing in this pulpit. Your walk in the Lord is not dependent on the pastor, is not dependent on whoever is ministering. Your walk in the Lord is dependent in Christ. Amen, church. Let us enjoy the rest of Pentecost. And I pray that each and every one of us will turn up tonight at the St. Andrew's Church. Hallelujah. Um, can, I don't know about you, but I've been very blessed, very blessed. And I want to thank Pastor Hector and Sister Marianne as well. And for your humility, for your honesty, for your openness. And um, I just, I don't know your past, of course, because I don't, I've only recently met you, but I just want to thank you for your sincerity. And I just feel we should all stand and pray for your pastor and his wife and family. And I just would like to hand this to somebody else to just pray. But I just feel we should say, honor them for today and for the, the last seven years. So if you two would like to just come to the front. And I just would like whoever wants to come up and just lay hands on them, please. He's your shepherd, and the Lord's called him. He's your shepherd of this little church. And it will be a bigger church. <laughs> I declare it's going to be a bigger church in Jesus' name. 
So do we pray in tongues, however you want to pray. Please pray out loud. Why not pray all together? Let's pray together. God hears every prayer that we say, so let's pray for them in the name of Jesus. for them, Lord, as they give out to others, Lord. Will you give out to them, Lord, in abundance, Father, in abundance, in abundance, Lord, flowing out, Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord. Thank you. Naging open siya sa amin, Lord. Lord, continue to bless, Lord, to guide him, Father God, through to the fulfillment, Father God, ng nais mo sa kanyang buhay, Panginoon. Ganon din, Panginoon, sa aming lahat as bilang kapamilya, Lord. Maging open kami, Lord, with the open and humbleness, Father God, na, na ikaw, Panginoon, ng <clears throat> Hallelujah, Jesus. You are the author, oh God. Holy Spirit, thank you for the for as we celebrate this Pentecost, Father, thank you for your revelations of buhay ni Pastor, Panginoon. Okay, Lord, we thank you. Continue, Lord, to strengthen him, Father God. We, we pray the, the, the covering, Father God, in his life. The blood covering protection, Panginoon, in his life, O Lord. Sa kanyang, uh, uh, sa araw-araw in his life, O Lord. His uh, covering, the blood covering protection from you, Jesus. Wherever he goes, Father God, whatever, wherever his footsteps, O Lord, saan mo siyang dadalhin, Panginoon? Lord, your covering be upon him, O Lord, sa kanyang pamilya, Panginoon. Kaya, Lord, thank you. Patuloy, Panginoon, na bigyan mo siya ng kalakasan. Strengthen him always, Father God. Show, O Lord, what is the, um, your plan, O Lord. Patuloy na siya, Panginoon, ang aking gabay, Lord, as our shepherd, Lord, in this church, Father God. Lord, continue to pour out your Holy Spirit be upon him, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, ano man ang kayong dinaranas, Panginoon, physical health, O Lord. Lord, you are the healer, Father God. Lord, pagkalingin mo siya, Panginoon, sa any diagnosis, Panginoon, sa kanya, the hypertension, Father God, na kanyang dinanas sa amin, Panginoon, naging trauma, trauma siya, Lord. Lord, palitan mo ito, Panginoon. Thank you for Holy Spirit that revealing to him, Father God, na naintindihan, na unawaan niya, Panginoon, ang nais mo, Panginoon, sa kanya, Panginoon. Lord, thank you for that love. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the revelation to him na Panginoon, kung may mga shortcomings man kami, Lord, Panginoon, ano man aming mga pagkukulang, oh Lord, Panginoon, we, we sit our hearts on you, Father God, as we obey you to you, Father God, we will obey our shepherd, oh God, above all you are our shepherd, Father, 
thank you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the life of our pastor and his family, Lord. Continue to bless, for you are the God of provision, and you are the God, O oh Lord, of protection. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the life of our pastor. Purihini ka, Panginoon. Purihini ka. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much. May God bless you all. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Hallelujah. I think, uh, yeah, we can uh, continue the celebration. <laughs> Victory song. Would be victory song, ayo. Okay, sige. It. Are we going to? There you go. Jump to a birthday celebration. Let us uh, call our brother celebrants in the front.
Halleluja. Uh, I thank the Lord again for giving us a chance or giving me a chance uh, to celebrate uh, my birthday with uh, my Sierra family. Uh, and also, uh, while you're getting uh, older, uh, you, cannot, you cannot avoid uh, thinking about your future. But uh, we, don't, we don't know our future, only God the Father knows. So just trust in Him and have faith in Him. Amen. Trust in Him always. Yeah. Um, Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Copy paste? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, first of all, I want to thank the Lord for uh, another year. I thank Him for the past year and uh, coming years to come. Uh, without Him, I wouldn't be here. Uh, I'm here because He's here, and I'm here because you are here as well. And <laughs> yeah, uh, it's because of Him that I am here. And I thank my wife. Uh, he's always being there for me as well whenever I'm down and uh, when I'm sick. And uh, yeah, it's she's the uh, wife that I prayed for. So I, I thank him and I thank my children as well. Uh, they are very lovely children and uh, uh, I thank the Lord for them. And uh, I thank Sierra Church, our pastor, for being there, uh, guiding us. Uh, Every time that uh, we need him, he's always there. And uh, I want to apologize if sometimes I'm not uh, that able to help you in any ways that you want me to help you. And uh, I want to apologize to the church as well for uh, any shortcomings that uh, I may have uh, uh, made or I, ha I haven't been doing well these past few years. But uh, let's just keep on going. And let's just keep on trusting the Lord and let's give glory to the Lord every time. Always. Amen. Amen. And I also thank my wife. <laughs> I also thank my wife, yeah. Joanna? <laughs> no, thank you, thank you. Buti na lang. Buti na lang. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, let us pray for our dear brothers celebrating their birthday today. And yes, I thank the Lord that uh, that birthday is being celebrated in Him. Amen. So let's simplify the formula. Um, uh, yes, when uh, with regards to the future, in order for us to be sure of the future, let's rest our future in the Lord. And uh, thank you that uh, yeah, we are able to celebrate. Sometimes how to celebrate the birthday, going here, going there. But once we celebrate our birth in the Lord, that's it, secured. Let us pray, church. Let's extend our heart, our hands to our dear brothers, Ramon and Michael, our most gracious Lord and heavenly God, thank you for the life of our wonderful brothers, your servants, O God, whom called by you in behalf of this church family. It truly is a wonderful opportunity and privilege to be a part of them and for them to be a part of us. And Father, thank you very much that, Lord, they have surrendered their life unto you. That they have surrendered their future unto you, Father God. And, Lord, we pray by faith that whatever it is that does do, O Lord God, in your works, in your kingdom, Father God, but most importantly, in their future as a believers, that, Lord, we pray that as we are being reminded of Pentecost, may they continuously desire and rely and pursue Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that when time of obscurity comes, when times that they need infilling, 
be the same God that will infill them and that will overflow through them, Lord. And thank you so much, Lord. Whatever longing, whatever thirst, whatever hunger in their very core, Holy Spirit, fill it. Overflow. Overflow. Holy Spirit, fill it. Overflow. Overflow. Let their plans, let their day to day be in line with you, O Lord. Thank you so much for their life. Most importantly, thank you that you are in their life. Thank you for the lives of their respective parents that you have used them for them to be born, O God, in this world, Lord that you, they have been an instrument. Thank you so much for the life of the family, the wives, and the children that you have given them. Just completing that life, O oh God. And thank you for their brothers and sisters, Lord, who are there, O oh Lord God, on pressing times. Thank you so much, Lord, through Christ. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Hallelujah. Okay, let's all stand and let us close in prayer, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Father God. That in unique ways, you have filled us. Thank you, Lord, that once again, you serve as our source this afternoon. Thank you for all the lives of our dear brothers and sisters who came and worship and fellowship with us this afternoon. To the people who joined us online, in behalf of the family, in behalf of the church, we thank you, Lord, that you have brought their footstep in this place this afternoon. And thank you, Lord, that you have ministered and that you have revealed yourself unto them. Lord, it is our, our prayer, Father, that may you continue to rema in us on everything that we have experienced here today. We know and we do believe that there is a reason and purpose while you have allowed us to be in this situation today, oh God. Thank you very much, Lord. Continue to excite us. Continue to give us that passion and desire, oh God, not only of service, but of you most importantly. And my dear brothers and sisters, I personally thank you for your service. Thank you for your fellowship. It has been a great honor and privilege to worship the Lord and stand alongside you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ in the love of God and the fellowship and the company of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Let us go then in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's give to the Lord the glory. Thank you. Thank you.